Hey guys, this is Majora's Minions here. I'm DKG, and I'm here today with... Falcon Gaming. Yep, Falcon Gaming is here today with us. And finally, 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 Villain of the Week is here. Now, it took us like 50 years to get Episode 2 running, but today, regardless, even if we sound stupid, we're just gonna talk about this guy, because we love him. And today's villain is Ganondorf. Now, before we start off with just some thoughts that we like about him falcon gaming from what you've researched uh tell us what do you think about ganondorf and just what have you found in general well after i did all my research like before i did all my research i mean i did not know like that ganon was such a selfish guy he was the first man correct me on this part dk he was the first man to be born into his Gerudo family in like a century, I think. Yeah, every thousand years, I think a man is born, correct. Yeah, every thousand years. So, he automatically became the king of the Gerudo, of Gerudos of that century. So, and he, he was one greedy and selfish guy. Like, he was extremely selfish. He thought he was the strongest, and, and he was, like... He definitely was. Yeah, yeah. He was part of, yeah, he was part of, he was part of various gangs of... Thieves. Um, the, yeah, he was, yeah, thieves of the Gerudos. And he was like the king. He was, he's just, he's powerful. Like, he has some crazy, crazy things that he can do. Yeah, and if if possible, uh, it's okay if you don't have it. That I sent you a list of his powers and abilities. I, I don't have them either right now. Do you think you can list them or not? Yes, I will listen for you right now. Alright, while he's doing that, guys, I'll just name some stuff. Ganondorf, in general, like he said, he is the only man of his tribe of Gerudo women. They're a tribe of thieves. They live in the desert. And so, that's their own little kingdom. Um, I believe the Gerudo deserts, of course, are near the Hy Hylians, a.k.a. near Hyrule. And so, basically, in Ocarina of Time, Ganondorf wants to make a truce between the king of Hyrule and obviously the king of the Gerudos himself. So he fakes being on the king's good side. They make a treaty. But as you see in Ocarina of Time, he betrays the king's treaty. And if I, I don't remember it right that much because I haven't played Ocarina since last year. Or actually, no, that's wrong. I played Ocarina probably like a couple months ago. But in general, in that plot line, Ganondorf really betrays the king like I said. And he's taken over, and he's really trying to get all the three pieces of the Triforce. And so Ganondorf in that game is aware of the hero that's said to stop him. And so how you know this is when he, when you're young Link and you turn into adult Link, Ganondorf sends you a telepathic message, which shows you part of his power. He has telepathy, or a telekinet. I don't know. I, I'm not sure which one it is. But Ganondorf sends you a message through his mind. He's aware you've awakened into your adult form. And so basically, when you're adult Link the first time, you see Ganondorf has taken over. Like, most of Hyrule is, like, zombie-ish and all dead in. You, you notice Ganondorf has basically taken over the whole Earth. And so that just shows, I believe he didn't have the Triforce of Power by that time, but I could be remembering it wrong. But that is pretty powerful if Ganondorf, without the Triforce of Power, could do all that. Plus, in Ocarina of Time, the, the, what's, I, don't, I forgot the big tree's name, but it's the tree in the beginning of the game. Gan the reason why the tree dies is because Ganondorf, um, cursed it. And that's why in the beginning of the game, the tree eventually dies. Hey, Falcon Gaming, have you found it yet? Yes, I have it right here. Alright, let's... I'm gonna name some of his powers and abilities. Alright, alright. So, he has superhuman strength, speed, durability, magic, telekinesis, flight, and levitation, shape-shifting, usually in the form of Ganon, a large demonic entity, usually under the guise of a boar, but he can also become a gigantic spider and twisted puppet-like creature. Reality warping, invisibil invisibil invisibility, holds a third of the Triforce. The Triforce of Power increases physical strength and grants immortality. Type 1 and 2. Black magic, which he is quite versatile with and is amplified by the Triforce of Power, includes drying up entire lakes, freezing large bodies of water, creating monsters, covering Hyrule Castle in lava, and much more. 
giving him a high, a nigh unlimited magical source, acquires the ability to use Twilight Magic and Twilight Princess, which allows him to become intangible, possesses people, and even revert any entity with a specific area, an entire region, into a bodiless soul without them even realizing it. So, as he said there, Ganondorf is able to reality warp. Now, I don't know if you, um, if any of you know what that means, but basically, if you have that ability, uh, I mostly know reality manipul warping from characters such as the Scarlet Witch from the Marvel Universe, or Thanos when he has the Infinity Gauntlet, but that's only one of the things Thanos could do with the Infinity Gauntlet. But that is a pretty powerful ability to reality warp. And, like, he said as well, um, did you say that Ganondorf can, uh, crap, create beings or something like that? Yeah, he can create monsters. Yeah, he can create actual life from his hands. And similar to how the Hulk, the Incredible Hulk, has literally unlimited power as of strength. Like, literally, his strength can almost literally cannot be matched. Because he'll continue to grow for an eternity, as long as you're fighting him, really. And so, that's like Ganondorf, Gan but with magic. Ganondorf, with the Triforce of Power, has basically unlimited magic. So, in general, that's his powers and abilities. So, Falcon, have you learned anything, I guess, about Ganondorf's personality or his motives or whatever? Um, not really, besides that, like I said earlier, he's selfish, and his overall goal in, goal in life is, you know, to have the complete Triforce, have all the Triforce power, and take over the world, and just pretty, pretty much be the king of the world. Yeah, that is true. Ganondorf, really, his... His main motive is classic villainish, I guess, in the way that he does want to take over everything. But it it's like that villain where, uh, how do I? Explain? It's like probably uh, Falcon Gaming doesn't know it yet, but in Final Fantasy VI, <coughs> the villain named Kefka, who we will cover in a later episode, in the game he literally um, c gets godhood and destroys the, most of the planet. And so I guess in Ocarina of Time, Ganondorf kind of succeeds with doing that, but doesn't destroy it. But he takes it over, so that that's interesting, I guess. But in Gan general, Ganondorf's motives, like Falcon said, he's selfish. He really just wants the power. I mean, that's why the Triforce of Power, when it was broken up, it went to Ganondorf, because that's all he wants, really. And so in general... Oh, here's something I think Falcon probably knows about. Do you know about his Ganon form? the A.K.A. the pig yeah. form? So, explain to them, I guess, how he looks, or whatever. Yeah, so, he turns into a huge boar, and like you said in the, in the little paragraph that I read you guys, it's like pretty much a demon. And Ganondorf, Ganon is the name of the boar. We call him Gan Ganon when he's in the form of the boar. And when he's in his normal form, when he's like standing on two legs and everything, and he's normal, that's when he's Ganondorf. And that's crazy, like, he can literally turn it into, it's a deer into a spider, a huge spider or a puppet-like creature, and this huge boar, which is, like, extremely strong, and it's huge, too. Yes, exactly. Like he said, <clears throat> the Ganon form is his actual gigantic real form. Now, from what I've read, the Ganon dwarf form is a disguise, like, it's kind of like a yeah. human form. But his real form, like Falcon Gaming was saying, like, that's his real form, the Ganon. Mm -hmm. And in general, uh, I'm not sh I think it's in the Oracle games, the Oracle of Ages slash Seasons slash Link's Awakening, I think. Sorry if I'm wrong, forgive me. But I believe the main plot of those are these villains, like Onyx and stuff, who are trying to yeah. revive Ganon. Like, and in a Link Link's Awakening, or no, not Link's Awakening, um... What was that 3DS Link to the Past sequel? Uh, a Link Between Worlds. Worlds. Yes. The main plot is Yuga trying to revive Ganon. And in a lot of other Zelda games, you see everyone's just trying to get this guy back to life. And you, that's a sign where they know Ganondorf is kind of like the ultimate. And in general, and I think... Oh, I'm, I'm trying to remember this. And do you know the game um, Hyrule Warriors? Yeah, but I've never played it. I yeah, I haven't played it either. But I've seen the cutscene where uh, Giraham from um, Skyward Sword and Zant 
from Twilight Princess. Ganondorf revives them, I believe, or teleports them there, I forgot. And he makes them bow down to him, and they do, because they know exactly who this guy is. And he says, you'll work for me now, or you'll perish. Something like that. But as you know, other Zelda villains respect this guy, because in general, other than Majora's Mask, I believe Ganondorf is like the final thing, the most powerful. And I guess Falcon Gaming, he, I, I believe Falcon Gaming knows this. Tell them, I guess, the Link, how Link and Zelda are always different, but you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, guys, Link and Zelda, in each game, they're different people. Like, for the most part, yeah. Yeah, for the most part, they're different people. Well, Ganon, or Ganondorf on the other side, he always reincarnates or... Is the or same or person. Is, he always reincarnates as the same exact person. Like, or, on the other hand... Like, exactly. Uh, for the, for the, for the most part, are different, which is, you know, pretty crazy because there are not many villains, like, just, like, in a huge, huge franchise, like, The Legend of Zelda, that that kind of stuff happens, like, Ganondorf is such a big part from the first, from the first, um, game, you know, on the, on the NES, you can see him in his original Ganon form as a pig, and he's pretty much always been the same person. But, you know, Link and Zelda have not, that's not the case for them, which is extremely, like, it's fascinating to think about. Exactly, so, exactly like what he said, Ganon, Ganondorf has all the memories of every event that's happened, which is amazing exactly. to think. Exactly, And I guess we'll finish up with Ganondorf, that was a great discussion, uh... Sorry if we got a couple things wrong, guys. I mean, this isn't scripted. It's not meant to be super accurate. It's just our thoughts on the character. Next week, we will be covering Metal Sonic. And you guys will be surprised. This guy is actually a, a kind of big deal. And you'll see why. But in general, this is Ganondorf. Hope you guys liked it. And I guess Falcon Gaming, if you want. Is there any last thoughts on Ganondorf? Or any thoughts on next week's villain? Uh, no, I don't have any more thoughts on Ganon, just, just uh, all I have to say, you know, come and check out our episode 3 on Metal Sonic. Like, like um, DKG said, there's, I, I think we're going to cover a lot of things that you guys didn't know about him. Because, you know, he he's not a villain that is talked about that much these days. So I'm just, you know, hope you guys tune in for the next episode. Alright guys, so this is DKG signing out, hope you guys have a good